And let's look at one by one. So, question number one. Basically, in the my system, I have iron oxide and alumina, FeO, Al2O3, and then I have gas, which is 94.9% nitrogen, and then 5% hydrogen, and then 0.1% H2O at 800 degrees Celsius. So 800 degrees Celsius. Some of you actually say that 800 degrees Celsius as uh, what? The, what's the temperature you wrote? So it's uh, 1073 Kelvin, yeah? 800 degrees Celsius. Some of you actually say that in not this question, in the next or next next question, I say 700 degree, and you say that it's uh, 10 1073 instead of the 973. Okay? I mean, this is very basic thing, Celsius to the Kelvin, okay? And then I accept that, I mean, so you make one mistake and then based on that mistake, I actually look for the next actually the procedure. If that is correct, you actually only get actually the partial mark out in the very first mistake. But the next one, if it is okay, I, give, I try to give you the full mark also, okay? So generally, I'm checking step by step all your mistake and then take out some mark. Okay, anyway, so this one, I say that basically this iron oxide and alumina is more or less separate. Okay, it's not reacting together. So iron oxide, basically this is two, basically it's two systems. One is iron oxide containing system, the other one is alumina containing system, yeah. So you can treat it as a independently. Okay, that's the, what I actually give you as a kind of assumption here. Okay, so there's the two way, yeah, to solve this problem. And one of the way is, for example, if you look at the iron plus O2, so for example, the very first one, half mole of O2 equal to FeO, I give this delta G naught of the action, yeah? So you can actually put the temperature and you get actually what's the delta G naught of this reaction number one, okay? And then there's actually the last equation, H2 gas. And this is delta G naught, for example, number one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So there's two possible ways. One is you just put together to eliminate oxygen and then make sure that hydrogen and hydrogen oxide gas phase is appear in the actual your chemical reaction. Okay? And then because you have this concentration of the two different gas species here, based on that you can determine the delta G of the action is positive or negative. Because this is not equivalent state. I'm telling, I, I ask you whether this is stable or not. So I ask you direction of the direction, yeah? So when you actually look at the direction, you have to check what's the delta G of the action. Is the positive, negative, or zero, okay? So if you do this one, so basically it will be ion And so delta G of reaction equal to delta G naught plus RT ln AFEO and partial pressure of H2 and AFE and partial pressure of H2O. And I assume all this one is separate phase, so it's a stoichiometry, so it means activity equal to one. So pH2 or 5 cents, so 0 0.05 and 1 atm, yeah, total pressure, or 0 0.05 times total pressure, but total pressure, total pressure will be cancelled out each other here, okay, and this is 0 0.001. If you're doing that, this is positive, okay. I saw a lot of students actually wrote this one, and somehow you get the wrong answer here, and you say it's a negative. 
I don't know. I, I tried to be a PR. What mistake you made there? I could not understand. But somehow, you make a mistake in the final equation here. And then the, the answer you say that it's negative instead of positive. So you say that F here is forming. That's wrong, obviously. It forms iron because it's positive. And you do the same thing for each one of these. Okay? And then for the aluminum, it's the same thing. You do the same way. Then you get actually the, instead of alumina, AL23, you'll get aluminum. AL is stable. Okay? Very okay, good? I look at your procedure. So even though you actually, your answer was completely wrong, you say that fe 304 and AL23 is stable, but I try to give you the partial mark, at least more than 10 mark, because at least you know what you have to do. And there was some mistake somehow in the middle of your cal calculation. Okay? So, if you feel like I can, now, I'm telling you, why I'm telling you this one is I'm just giving you the, what's my criteria to check actually all your, I mean, how I actually mark you actually the, the exam. So if you feel like I have much lower value than I said, please come to see me. Okay? See me today. Okay? And just after class or today, so we can actually look at it again. Okay? This is how, how you have to solve it. And there's actually another student, another group of students who did this one in di differently. So basically, they try to calculate what is equilibrium oxygen partial pressure from here. Okay, so this is the one other way. So H2 plus half of O2 equal to H2O, yeah? So this, I know the delta G naught of this number 5 at the given temperature. Then add equilibrium. So it means add equilibrium in the gas phase. Because gas is controlling the entire oxidation or reduction process here. So the equilibrium delta G of this reaction equal to zero. This gives delta G naught of reaction five equal to minus RT ln pH2O and pH2 and PO2. Okay? And then you get the, what's the PO2? equilibrium at the gas phase from this one. Okay? And then, so you know what's the actual gas partial pressure here, oxygen partial pressure in the gas. And then you compare each of these chemical reactions. So now, if you look at this one, now add equilibrium. If you, this one want to be equilibrium state, you have delta G equal to zero. So delta G not of reaction one, equal to minus RT ln activity of FeO, activity of iron, and the partial pressure here. So you compare this partial pressure and this partial pressure. If this partial pressure is higher than this partial pressure, then it means Fe is forming. Because to make FeO, you need a very high, you need, for example, 10 to the minus P or P10, ATM, but current partial pressure is 10 to the minus 20, then it means iron oxide cannot be formed. Okay? Or, if you like, you can actually enter, instead of this way, instead of comparing PO to PO2, you can even do this one. Delta G of this reaction 1, delta G naught, plus RT, ln, activity of FeO, activity of iron, PO2, and then you enter this PO2 from here. And then see whether this delta G of reaction is positive or negative. This is exactly the same as this one, actually. Because we just change these two to this one. Okay? So all three different ways is possible. Is okay? All of you, except for the two students, was okay for the procedure. But somehow they had a mistake during the calculation. So you actually lose a couple of points here and there. But as I told you, there's two students who actually say that this is minus. And I took out the point very seriously. Because this is a very serious problem. So I think those students probably I take out even more than 10 points for just 10 mistakes. OK? You good?
you will see similar question in the future. In the final exam, or even middle term exam, number two. Because this one I assume that Fe and all this one, activity equal to one, yeah? Except for the gas phase. But now we are learning activity of solid or liquid phase, yeah? So I can make exactly the same question, but different activity for the iron or iron oxide. Okay? Then you have to now enter your activity coefficient and the mole fraction to calculate activity to see the weather reaction going to the forward or backward. You good? Okay, number two. So, we have one more blood. And uh, so we have lead inside of the graphite crucible. So basically we have, so in the system, so this is carbon and we have PB here, okay? A solid, 0.5 moles, and this is one mole. And then I'm injecting the oxygen, O2, 0.1 mole, O2 gas phase at 25 degrees Celsius, 298 Kelvin. So this is initial state. And then this oxygen can react with the carbon, produce the CO gas, and that's better exomic reaction. And then it will produce eventually carbon 0.8 mole, and then CO gas, 0.2 moles, and then I have lead, PB. So PB is not reacting actually. And we are on the what's the final temperature here. Okay? So basically what is happening is during this one, it's 0.1 mole of carbon reacting with, no, 0.1 mole of O2 gas phase is reacting with 0.2 moles 2 moles of carbon and it become 0.2 moles of CO gas phase and this chemical reaction delta H is very negative so it's exomic reaction so that heat is used to increase the temperature of your system is it okay? So I'm just asking you, okay, what's the final temperature and final state of the, this species? Okay, so now let's just write down the entire thing again. So I have 0 0.1 mole of O2 gas phase and I have plus 0 0.5 moles of PB solid plus 0 1.0 moles of carbon solid at T equal to 298 Kelvin. So this is my initial state. And then it becomes finally 0.2 moles of the CO gas phase plus 0.5 moles of the PB. I don't know what's the state. It could be solid or liquid. And I think that's the only two. There's no gas phase at the moment. Plus 0.8 moles of the carbon solid state. And this one, T, we don't know. Okay? So this is the this is the reaction we are talking about, okay? So H in the first state, H in the final state should be same. That's a adiabatic condition. There's no heat loss. So it means H enthalpy in the initial state, enthalpy in the final state should be same. Am I right? Okay, 
So H in the initial state. So in order to find this one, basically you can go one more step. In the intermediate step, so you say that, okay, this one and then 0.2 moles of the CO gas phase plus 0.5 moles of the PB solid plus 0.8 moles of the carbon solid at 298 Kelvin and then I can go this one, yeah? So it's Hess law. So we can do any kind of, we can put any kind of intermediate state. You can even use the different temperature if you like, but if you actually put the different temperature, it's more difficult to calculate it. So from same temperature to same temperature, chemical reaction happening. And then we know what's the delta H of this reaction number one. And then this delta H of reaction two. And delta H1, delta H2 should be same to make sure that delta H for the initial final should be zero. Okay? Because delta H1, H at the intermediate state, so this one, so let's assume this is initial, this is mid state, and this is final state. Yeah? So delta H1 equal to H of this middle state minus H of initial state and delta H2 equal to H of the final state H of the middle state so if you say these two together is mid mid is cancelled out delta H1 plus delta H2 same as H of the final minus H of the initial and this should be zero and that's actually adiabatic condition. So it means no heat loss. Are you good? So let's find this to become zero. Okay? <coughs> so now let's look at delta H1. Delta H1. So, lead is lead solid, solid 298 Kelvin. So, it's cancelling out. There's nothing special. And the carbon and the oxygen, if you look at it, basically delta H1 is related to the 0.1 mole of O2 reacting with the 0.2 moles of the carbon at 298 Kelvin and solid at 298 Kelvin. equal to 0 0.2 moles of CO gas phase at 298 Kelvin. So this is the only chemical reaction we have to consider, yeah? And the rest of them is same, same state. So it doesn't actually contribute to the change of the enthalpy. Okay. Now, what is this enthalpy, delta H1? So, either you have chemical reaction, delta H1, chemical reaction for this one, Delta H1 equal to A plus BT plus CT and blah, blah, blah. If you have those equation, you can enter that directly here. Or otherwise, you have to now calculate Delta H1 equal to basically H 0.2 moles of H molar enthalpy of CO gas phase at 298 Kelvin. Okay. Minus 0.1 mole of H of O2 at 298 Kelvin. And then 0.2 moles of H of carbon of solid at 298 Kelvin. Is this okay? You have to do it in this way, yeah? And here, I mean, I'm sorry. Luckily, you have actually the delta H. I'm sorry, I thought actually you don't have it. Delta H for this chemical reaction is given, yeah? Sorry. So, or 
In the, this question, this is minus 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 5, 2, 8, joule per mole. This is given. And, but this is per mole times 0 0.2, because it's per mole of C, but this is 0 0.2 moles of C. So you have to multiply by 0 0.2, and then you get the what's delta H1. It okay? You good? And then, now, okay, so we know delta H1. Now, the next one, delta H2. Delta H2. Delta H2 is increasing of the temperature. So, 0 0.2 moles of CO gas at 298 Kelvin and 0 0.5 moles of the PB solid at 298 Kelvin and then 0 0.8 moles of carbon solid at 298 Kelvin. So this one go to the 0 0.2 moles of CO steel gas state at the some unknown temperature and this one is 0 0.5 moles of PB and some unknown state at the final temperature because this can be solid or liquid. This is the only one, we have to be careful. And the other one is... Okay. This one. So, I have to sum of these three. That should be this one, yeah? So, this first one. CO. Change of temperature without changing of the state. There's two ways to calculate this one. So, delta H of this one equal to integral of CPDT from 298 Kelvin to the final temperature. If CP is given, but CP is not given here, yeah? CO, H is given directly. Okay? Instead of this one, it could be like H over the final temperature minus H over the 298 Kelvin. And then, I mean, this one multiply, sorry, multiply 0 0.2, yeah? And multiply. 0.2 per molar enthalpy because it's 0.2 moles. So if I have CP, I can enter it here. And if I have H, I can just enter it directly. It's a temperature and then make a difference from T at unknown temperature and the 298 Kelvin. And here I have the H is given directly. So H of CO is this one is 0.0029 T square plus 27.099 T plus something, but this will be also cancelled out. The constant term will be cancelled out later, so it doesn't matter. And then 298 Kelvin square plus 27.099 times 298 Kelvin. Then you get actually this one, and then multiply by 0 0.2. Okay? About 80% of you did it in this way. It's good. And about 20% of you assume that this H is CP and you enter the inside of CP and you do the integral again. That's obviously wrong here. Yeah? It's not CP, it's H. I already, because instead of giving you the CP as a function like this, I mean some function, to make it easy, I gave actually H already. So you have to use H directly to calculate the enthalpy. Yeah? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. You actually, so, there's two ways. Uh, there's two, two, two group of students, I'm sorry, yeah. I have to tell you that. Because if you actually just extrapolate this one, if you're using this equation to 298 Kelvin, the enthalpy at 298 Kelvin is not zero, of course, yeah. CO, enthalpy, CO gas at 298, it's not zero. Because it's not elemental species. This is carbon and oxygen mixture, yeah? So you have to think about, okay, valid until down to the 500 Kelvin. Then how can I get 298? You have to extrapolate down, <laughs> of course. So you have to enter 298. Okay? So I say this enthalpy is valid here.
But when you are outside a little bit, about two, three, I mean, one or two hundred Kelvin outside, it's still valid. Yeah. If you like, yes, that's also possible. Yeah, that's also possible. So he said that delta H, the very first case, very first equation, carbon solid, half molar oxygen becomes CO gas phase here. I have H at two nine delta H at two nine Kelvin. Yeah, this delta H at two nine Kelvin means H of CO gas at two nine Kelvin. Minus H of carbon at 298 minus half more of H of the oxygen at 298 Kelvin. <coughs> and carbon and oxygen, both of this one, is elemental species and stable at 298 Kelvin. We can assume that their H 298 is zero. So delta H of this chemical reaction, very first one here, this delta H here, this value, is in fact H of the CO gas phase. That's correct. I'm not sure whether this one and then second equation give you exactly the same, same answer or not. Almost same. Yeah. Either way, I'm fine. Is it okay? Do you understand? So, you have to do that. And then second one. So this one. This is also the same thing. Yeah. You do the same way or Actually, if you do the same way and the entry 298 Kelvin, it's not, H at 298 Kelvin is not exactly zero, but close to zero, according to this H equation. But you can either say that, okay, H298 is zero, and then you just only calculate, for example, this one, HT. <coughs> if you like, you just assume this is zero, and then just calculate HT, and then if you do the calculation, it will not change that much actual temperature in the end. The final answer is close enough. So either you do this way, or you just say HT and then H298. Really enter actually this 298 Kelvin for the H equation here and get the difference. Both of them is okay. You good? And this is actually the more question. No, both of them. Now for this one, there's a possible phase transition, yeah? of the solid lead become liquid lead at 600 degree Kelvin. Okay? So that's 600 degree Kelvin. Are we above this one or below this one? You have to judge it now. Okay? So, a lot of you actually just assume that it's above 600 degree Kelvin and then did a calculation and then you say, okay, I, my assumption is okay. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Or you can do two way. Let's assume it's a below 600 degree Kelvin, so maximum 600 Kelvin, and then you do the calculation of the H of the solid become solid. And then sum all this one together and then check this one and this value, and this is much smaller than this one, it means you still have some additional heat remaining. So you can now assume that, okay, it can go up to the above 600 degree Kelvin, so then, eventually, this one will be, so lead is at a given 0 0.5 moles, and then because this one is given as a CP, integral CP of the PB solid from 290 Kelvin to the 600 Kelvin plus Delta H of melting plus integral Cp of 600 Kelvin to the certain temperature. Okay? And then you sum this, this, this one, and there's only one unknown value, T, and then compare this delta H1. And then you can get the temperature. Then you get about 880. Well, some of you get about 886, depending on whether you, you put the H for this one as zero or not. It's slightly different answer. But both of them is okay. But you have to, some of you had a very close answer, but actually I took out a lot of points because in the middle of the process, you actually make a mistake. 
their mistake. Okay? So most of the time I say, okay, question mark, that means it's a mistake. Okay, you have your answer, mistake, somewhere? You know what's a mistake, yeah? So final answer is wrong, yeah? Are you good? Good. For example, this student, who is this one? He's not here today, yeah? Cho Young Min, Cho Young In. He or she? He. He's not here today. And he got, he put the final quadratic equation, but he didn't solve it. So he got 16 mark. So 4 point out. He could do it. He could solve it very quickly. I mean, it's not very complex equation, but he didn't do it. And uh, however, the old procedure was okay. Okay? Good? Okay, let's look at question number three. Okay, this is really the, the magnesium production process, so-called pigeon process. So it's actually named after one of the professor at the UBC, long time ago, no, it's the University of Toronto, in the, in the, around actually the Second World War time. So he actually produced the, the technology to he actually proposed technology to produce the magnesium, and that's actually the so-called named after him. As a, we call it now as a fission process, and this is basically. I mean, in this question, we have magnesium oxide, and then we have silicon, and then this is Mg2, no silicon, reacting together, and then it produces. Finally, magnesium gas phase, and then it will produce Mg to SiO4. Okay, so it's magnesium oxide reacting with silicon metal, so I have four, and then yeah, so this one. This is solid, solid, and solid gas phase at 12 degrees Celsius. Okay. So delta G naught, delta G naught. I mean, you can just combine these three equation, and you get actually what's the delta G naught. So it's not a big problem. All of you was okay to get the delta G naught. But somehow, while you are doing calculation, your partial pressure of magnesium, some of you was completely wrong. I don't know how you get the actual wrong answer, but you got the wrong value eventually. So at equilibrium, okay, G of reaction, Sorry, pressure. Thank you. And we are small. This one is one. Yeah. I have pure silicon and pure MgO, and then this is also pure Mg2SiO4. So you have this one. You good? And then I know this one. I know this two. So if you do the calculation, your partial pressure of the magnesium will be, this is also wrong. 
So 5 point, what's the value? 5.2, about 5.2, 10 to the minus 4. This is ATM, yeah? Not the Pascal, ATM, yeah? Small dynamic actuation. If there's no specification, it means the partial place should be ATM. Okay? This is answer. I'm telling you, more than 30% of you actually got the wrong answer here. I don't know why, really. Your delta G level is okay, but somehow during the calculation you make a mistake. Be careful. Because of that, I think you, you probably, you know, lost a couple of points. Okay? It's a very simple one, but I'm you're losing actually that. Because of very simple mistake, you actually make a couple of points off here. Okay, now, next question is, okay, I want to produce as much as magnesium for this reaction. How should I have to do? What should I have to do? Okay. And of course, this is one, number one, semi problem, number two, kinetic problem. There's actually both of them is involved. And a lot of you say that, okay, I want to increase temperature. That's the correct answer. Okay. I mean, one way you can quickly check, you just enter actually different temperatures, 39 degree Kelvin. So it's 13, you know, it's a 15, 73 Kelvin, 39 degree Celsius. If you do that, your partial pressure is higher than this one. So with the increasing of temperature, you have more actually the, I mean, more, more partial pressure magnesium can be produced. It, co it is costly because it's increasing temperature of the system. However, thermodynamically, yes, it's one of the right answer. Okay? That's good. And second one. It's from the Chatelier principle, you said. Okay. If I remove the magnesium here, I'll make this one go more quickly to the right side of reaction. So it's a forward reaction. That is correct, but however, it's not really providing the answer. Because I mean, that's a concept, yeah? That's a concept. I want to have the practice. What's the real practice? How can I remove the magnesium? You have to say that. Okay? I mean, the, the, the way you actually, the concept is correct. However, it's not really the practice. I, I say that, what's the process parameter I can control? It's not process parameter, it's a concept, yeah? So you have to provide how to remove the magnesium gas. Yeah? So a lot of you actually, I don't know how you knew it, say that, okay, I'm pressing the other one gas, then it will take out the magnesium and then, you know, continuously to the, uh, proce proceed this kind of process. That's the correct answer. Most probably you actually get that hint from the last two years of the middle term because I say that how much magnesium can be condensated at certain point. I mean, something like that, yeah. It's exactly the same question, actually. Just changing a little bit of style. So I'm actually asking exactly the same question. So, Either you put the continuously the argon gas. That's actually method to remove the magnesium, yeah? So it's the Chatelier principle. It will make more poor the chemical reaction. And some of you now say that, okay, I can increase the size of the reactor. That's also one of the method. Even the partial pressure is same, your total volume is increased. So total amount, number of moles, of the magnesium will be increased. Number of moles of magnesium gas will be increased. Yeah? P boy equal to NRT. And V is increasing. So total N is increasing too. Yeah? Do you follow me? And there's actually two additional answers. This is a little bit difficult to judge it. So I said, okay. One of them is you said, okay. I'm reducing the pressure of the system. Thermodynamically, that doesn't help. If you reduce the total pressure, the partial pressure should be still the same. Yeah? So if you reduce total pressure, so partial pressure, P magnesium, will be P total and magnesium. Yeah? So it's a mole fraction of magnesium. Okay? So this could be still one if you don't have any argon gas. This is always one, yeah? 
And then if you decrease this one, so if you decrease this one, I mean, you, this is same. If you decrease this one, you cannot increase it actually. If you don't have argon gas phase, you need argon gas. Then this fraction can go up, can go up. Am I right? Do you understand? However, kinetically, this is the right answer. <laughs> kinetically, if you reduce the pressure, total pressure, even you don't have argon gas inside the system, if you reduce the total pressure, any species who want to be the gas phase kinetically accelerated those kinds of evaporation process. Kinetically, it's possible. Okay? So that's why I say, okay, even reduce the partial pressure, it is okay. I give the, actually the additional mark for that one, assuming that this is correct answer, kinetically. And then you can even, I mean, some of you say that, okay, I have to increase the total pressure because this is one ATM, then I have, I mean, so because if this, if this is fixed, I have this partial pressure and then that's depending on the total, you know, partial pressure here. If I increase this one, total pressure, then is the my partial pressure is increasing? Actually, it's no, yeah, it's going down. I'm sorry, I asked. I probably gave you the, some mark for the total pressure, I mean, increasing the total pressure. Who was that? Who said that I want to increase total pressure? Who said that? None of you? Probably it's somewhere here. I, I'll take it out. Yeah. Anyway, that's the wrong answer, yeah? You have to decrease the partial pressure. Decrease total pressure, sorry. Okay? You okay? That is the sum of thing you can think about at the moment. But actually now you know the activity concept. There's no solution here, yeah? I can increase this activity or I can decrease this activity. It's very difficult to increase this activity because it's pure silicon already, yeah? But, however, I can decrease this activity by making this one as some solution. Okay? In fact, this is not real fission process. <laughs> I just make modified fission process to actually have the, you, to, to give it actually the exam in the middle term number one but if you look at some of the final midterm, fi not final midterm, final exam, which have still fission process, the chemical reaction is completely different. Okay? The chemical reaction, I add CaO here now. I'm adding CaO, then CaSO4 is forming, and then all this magnesium is evaporated. Okay, that's another. Then delta G of reaction is much smaller, much negative, so it actually accelerates evaporation of magnesium. That's a real fission process. Okay? Anyway, you have to keep in mind about this fission process. If North Korea, South Korea are unified, we will have a lot of resources of the magnesium in the North Korea. You might have to look at this one for your future career. Okay, question number four. Personally, I, I think this is the most typical question in this midterm number one. Question number four. I think there's only very few students who actually got the full mark for this one. Okay. Okay. We have 50 moles of liquid magnesium at 700 degrees Celsius, and we put the one mole of FeO.
So it's 973 Kelvin here, 700 degrees Celsius. So as I told you, some of you say that 700 degrees Celsius is 1073 Kelvin. Some, who had a mistake? You see? I mean, not one. <laughs> and even this student make a mistake too. Okay? 973 here. And then we have now adding one mole of FeO at 25 degrees Celsius. To one mole. Okay? We are reacting this one together and then it will produce something. The chemical reaction we have to consider now. I mean, this is the step. There's many different ways actually to solve this one. I'm, I'm, I'll show you two different ways, okay? And then the rest of them you have to think about it. So one of the ways is, okay, we have this one, and then before it make a chemical reaction, chemical reaction happen only at the same temperature. Then you can do the chemical reaction. But if it's different temperature, it's not ideal to allow the actual chemical reaction in the different, at different starting temperature, okay? Because it's very difficult to actually calculate sometimes. So, standard way is to make this one at the same temperature. Okay, so either you say that, theoretically, I just make everything 973 Kelvin. That's one of the way. Or the other way is, I make everything at 298 Kelvin. So whatever same temperature you want to have. Okay, that's one of the way. Or the other way is, okay, let's assume that there's no chemical reaction and only heat balance. That's also another way. Okay, so one of the way is this one. So I'm going to this one, assuming that, okay, I don't know the temperature, but I want to make this one, FeO, still solid state at a certain temperature, at one mole, without chemical reaction, only heat balance. And this one, 50 moles of magnesium <laughs> liquid at certain temperature. I don't know the temperature, but I want to calculate this temperature. It means delta H of this one is zero. No heat loss. No chemical reaction allowed, but only balancing the heat to make the same temperature. That's one of the way. Well, the other way is, as I told you, you can do, assume this one, okay, let's make everything is 973 Kelvin without chemical reaction, okay? So it means one mole of FeO solid at 973 Kelvin and 50 moles of FeO, at, uh, no, magnesium, liquid at 973 Kelvin. But this delta H naught, delta H A is not zero yeah, in this case. There's, there's some difference. And then you can go now, this one to the final, final one. Now you have two, two intermediate states here. So now you're actually allowing the chemical reaction, okay? If you do the chemical reaction, FeO will make a reaction with magnesium plus MgO. So you have one mole of MgO will form, one mole of iron will form, and then you have 49 moles of the magnesium liquid will form. This is solid, and this is solid at 973 Kelvin, or at this temperature, we don't know. And then you go to the final state. So another one, T final. Okay? So this is delta H2. Delta H2 is not zero. And then this delta H3. So basically, in this condition, you have to assume that delta H1. Zero. However, this is actually zero. Yeah. So very first one, you have to calculate this delta H1 condition to get the T, T1. So let's take T1. To know the T1, what's the T1 temperature? You okay? Can you do it? And then, once you know the T1 temperature, and then T final temperature difference, so there's no, I mean, so this one, for doing this one, you have to now consider, okay, whether liquid magnesium become gas phase or not. In fact, it's not going to the gas phase because it's, uh, the final temperature is around, around 1160 or 1180. 
I don't remember what's the final temperature. 11 something. Okay? So, if you actually enter it, it's above 1685, so it's including this gas reaction, evaporation, then you cannot actually reach to that temperature. So you actually come below the actually 1683 Kelvin before the evaporation, then you get the actual answer. About 11, 11 what? 1140? Who got the 100 mark? 1145. So final temperature is 1145. Okay? So here is the same thing. You have sometimes Cp, sometimes H. So when you calculate H difference, either you directly enter the temperature to the H function, or you have the integral of Cp. Okay? Some of you did this process. You did this one correctly, and then after that, you took only 49 moles of magnesium liquid to go into the final temperature without taking these two together. That is wrong here, yeah? obviously wrong. You have to consider this one also. You have to take this one also increase and take in the, these two also to the final temperature. Okay, that's the additional delta H. Of course, this is the main one because it's much bigger amount than the other two, but you still have to consider it. So the answer would be slightly different, but actually the your way to calculate is completely wrong. <laughs> so I took it out the mark. Okay, so this is another way as I told you. So you make intentionally this one, then this delta H A is not zero. And then you do the same chemical reaction again at T equal to 973 Kelvin. So now it's one more of MgO, one more of Fe, and then you have 49 moles of magnesium liquid phase at same temperature. So this is delta H B, and then you go to the delta H C. So in this case, delta H A yeah. and this first one, this is the same, 973 Kelvin. The only difference is this one, yeah. Okay? You can take whatever temperature if you want to go this way. It could be 973 Kelvin, or it could be 298 Kelvin too. It's possible. So you can put down your liquid magnesium at 298 Kelvin, virtual temperature at 298 Kelvin, and calculate how much enthalpy is generating during the decreasing of the heat. And then you go to the 298 Kelvin isomer, and then you go to the final. That's another way. But however, actually, there's another way too. So this is all entropy H is given for each species. In this case, you do not even do this way. <laughs> you just assume the very initial H, very final H directly. Because the final state you know, you assume final state is, for example, 49 magnesium liquid phase and 1 Mg or solid phase and 1 ion solid phase, but unknown temperature. So H of this one, H of this one, H of this one is final state. Minus H of this one, minus H of this one. Equal to zero. Because we know the H of each species. That's another way to do it. And actually, if you do that, I mean, if you're doing all this one, it will be eventually canceled out and it becomes exactly the same as of my last, actually, the the explanation. So H of this one minus H of this one equal to zero. That's also possible because I give the H for each reactant and each product. Okay? But this is a very special case. Most of the time you don't have this one. You have just kind of some of a chemical reaction, delta H of reaction, then you don't know H of each species. So you cannot use that actually does that. So the best, I mean, most uh, most common approach is going through the one of this way. Okay? You good? You get it? Okay. Last one. So, alien diagram. So, I'll tell you what mistake you are making typically here. 
Actually, there's also almost no student who got the full mark for this one, too. There's only one or two probably have full mark of this question. Because there's two mistakes typically you're making. One is, okay, I have here MN. This is zero, this is O. And there's the C, there's H. Yeah? So this is origin point of the line you have to draw to find what's the partial pressure of oxygen, partial pressure of, or difference of H to H2 or CO, CO2 ratio. Okay? Here is, for example, my log PO2. So, at this temperature, is it 1000 Celsius? So in order to know the partial pressure, this is wrong, yeah? This is wrong. I'm telling you, more than 20% of you make it this way. It should be stuck from here. Okay? Is it okay? H, H2, CO, H2, yeah? The other one. More mistake. Ideally say specifically, okay, MgO plus carbon equal to Mg gas phase. I want to calculate this delta G not of reaction, standard Gibbs energy of formation, standard Gibbs energy of reaction. So you can split into two, yeah? MgO equal to Mg. Yeah, then you get basically Mg gas phase plus O2 gas phase become MgO, two moles of MgO, solid phase. I have to know this one to go here and then to go there, yeah? Gas phase, please. I say gas phase. Even some of you probably asked to the my TA, is it gas phase? And my TA probably told you this is gas. Am I right? Huh? If you look at the magnesium, there's three lines. There's two pink. So this is Mg liquid, Mg solid. This is Mg liquid. This is Mg gas stage. Plus O2 plus equal to MgO solid phase. But 1000 degrees here. But I need a gas phase. Yeah? 98% of you read this number here. That's wrong, yeah? It should be read this one, yeah? There's only very few students really get to this concept. And so if you make a mistake here, just that, that mistake, two or three point off. Okay? So I say, okay, question, or I mark inside of your alien diagram. No, you know, that all those actual comment. Is it okay? So I look at the question more carefully next time. If you have any complaint about the, actually the result, <coughs> please come to see me now. And if you don't have it, let's, look, let's meet on today's what? Wednesday, yeah? I'll send you a homework number three by email. And let's see you on Monday.